Welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to write a report for the design of an experiment. In particular, I'm going to start with an example of an experiment. I'm going to talk about the benefits to self and others of writing a good report. I'm going to talk about the how-to. How do you go about actually doing this? And then talk about the standard structure as it applies to the report itself and to the abstract. And the PDF document um, that I'm going to be showing in here is at the following URL. So if you want to get the document itself, go to this URL. Suppose you're working at a company that is manufacturing widgets. It's really fun. And your role is to compare the performance of Adhesive A and Adhesive B. And Adhesive A is a very well-known product, whereas Adhesive B is not very well-known, and everyone on your team believes that this is a superior product. But you have the idea of, let's get some data. Okay, we start an experiment with a hypothesis, and a hypothesis is nothing more than an educated guess. So in this example, our hypothesis might be that Adhesive A is stronger than Adhesive B. Now, it's fairly apparent that people have probably studied the strength of adhesives, and so you do a really good literature review and go find a whole bunch of killer knowledge and you find out there's some standard tests and ways of measuring the strength of adhesives that are well accepted. So you build your test apparatus. Next you apply statistical methods and decide that 10 trials will give you good data and then you run your experiment and get your data and apply standard statistical methods to reach a conclusion. And suppose you reach a conclusion that both adhesives have the same strength and thus you recommend the lower cost option. So a report of an experiment is a written document that summarizes everything you did that was important. So for example, what the present situation is, why the experiment was done, what knowledge you found in your lit review, what methods you used, etc. You get the picture. When you write a good report, it benefits other people. Other people can learn from you what methods work, what your findings were, etc. Other people can understand how you reached your conclusions. There's no mystery. And most importantly, others can use your results without having to redo the work themselves. And in summary, you've contributed to the body of knowledge. This is a pretty cool and fun thing to do. A good report is also beneficial to self. And what I like the best is when you write a good experimental report, your results get applied. You've created value. You've done something with your training. This feels really good. It builds credibility for your results. It builds credibility for you as a competent professional. And another thing I really like is you learn a ton when you do an experiment. And all the lit review, writing it up, all the thinking. It's really cool. Another thing I like is it takes you out of the hot seat. Instead of having to argue, you can just simply sh show someone your report. And it's, here's what I did, here's what I found in the literature review. I could be wrong, but you just have it all laid out. And you don't have to defend or argue. You just simply say, have a look at this and let's discuss it. And lastly, it's a great resume builder. How to write a report. Here's some things that I found work. Start on day one, and you can list out your main sections, and I just start uh, writing lists and ideas down. And I use many, many drafts. And generally, my first five drafts are just lists and ideas, sketches, etc. I don't actually start writing till about draft six. And I only polish the report on the last few drafts. And the reason for using the drafts is the early ones, drafts three, four, five, are all about thinking. What is it I really want to communicate and getting your thinking really clear before you write it up. And then of course follow the standard template which I'll go over in a little bit. And I always write the abstract last. It's the hardest because I need to be very concise for my reader. Let me next describe the standard form of a technical report and this is the IMRAD standard. Here's the present situation. We have two adhesives, and everyone believes that adhesive A is stronger, but we don't really have good data. My goal state is to get good data. Here's why reaching this goal state matters. If we have good data, we can select the best adhesive. 
and we can get the one that's the strongest and uh, if adhesive B turns out to be the best we can get the lower cost option. As I looked at the literature I found people have discovered a lot about the strength of adhesives. Here's the basic physics and here's some standard ways to test it and I selected this test and here's why. In the methods section you want to write in past tense and you just lay out for your reader exactly what you did. I prepared my samples like this. I built my text fix, uh, test fixture like this. I measured force like this. Uh, I took the data and processed it like this. I let the samples dry for this many hours, etc., etc. Also, very, very important, you want to tell your readers. My experimental results could be an error, but here's all the validation checks I measured. And give them the numbers and give them the results of your validation. Same thing when you have a math model. My math model could be an error, but here's all the ways I checked it to try and ensure that I was getting good numbers. Validation is super important to the scientific method. In results and discussion, you just simply lay out for your reader. Here's the data I got. Here's how I interpreted it. Here's some of my concerns. Here's what I think it's telling me. And you just give a really clear explanation. And then in conclusions, you pull out the key results, your findings, and you just lay these out for your readers. And a real important thing when you're doing this is the notion of quantification. Give them numbers. Give them percentages. Tell them what exactly the conclusions are with numbers. And then lastly, Put details in appendices. The standard form of an abstract, again, you follow the MRAD, but you, you leave out some of the sections. So basically, you want to introduce your project. Summarize why the project was done and what your goals were. And you do this in one to two sentences. This project was done because we had several adhesives and we wanted to figure out which one was the uh, best in terms of its strength. Then summarize the method in one to three sentences. We used the XYZ test method. We measured force with a um, XKV force transducer. And we used the procedure outlined in Ripken et al. 1984. And then lastly, our main findings were that both adhesives had nearly the same strength. Therefore, uh, the company will be better off using Adhesive B because it is 50% lower in cost. In summary, I told you about writing a report about the design of an experiment. And I gave a sample experiment where you're comparing Adhesive A and Adhesive B to see which one is stronger. I think the key benefit of doing a really good report is that others can apply your results. This feels really good and it builds credibility for you. The key method on how to write a report is write lots and lots of drafts starting with uh, day one of the experiment. And in your very early drafts, don't write prose. That takes a lot of time. Just sketch out ideas and things that you want to put in each section. When you write your abstract and do this last, just introduce, here's why I was doing this, here's what the goals are, here's methods for reaching the goals, and here's the findings. And again, quantify these. Give people numbers. And in the standard form of the report itself, here is the present situation. Here's my goal state. Here's why reaching this goal state matters. And here is what people have learned about this particular area of knowledge. Here's the methods I used to reach my goal state. Here's the results I got and how I process these and interpret them. Here's my main findings. And if you want to look at the details, you can find them in my appendices. That concludes this talk. I hope you've learned a few useful things. We'll see you next time.